I just want to alert you right now that, in my opinion, this is the most important of all the sessions that I'm teaching on this subject. I believe this to be the most important subject in your life, actually even more important than understanding the end times, as, as, import, as, as important as that is and the focus the Lord's putting on that in our community. This is most important message is one of the most overlooked messages in the church and one of the most neglected messages in individuals' lives. And I just want to put this before you, that you hardly ever hear this topic, and yet it is the most important topic to you as a born-again believer. It's the issue of running for the prize. Paul spoke about a prize. He had a clear prize in his mind. And that prize, and we'll look at it in a few minutes, the actual verse in 1 Corinthians 9, is that he wanted to receive the testimony from the Lord on the last day. The testimony that he was complete in, all, uh, in obedience in all the areas of his life. That the Lord would look at him and say, Paul, you did it. I gave you X amount of years to live as a believer. And the goal as a believer isn't even ministry first, although ministry is important. The goal, our number one reason God gives us extended days on the earth after we're a believer, to give us an opportunity to receive the testimony that we were complete or comprehensive in our obedience in every, every area of our life. And the Holy Spirit actually gives us time and He woos us and that's His plan for our life, though most believers are never focused on that concept in their life. They're focused on pressures being alleviated, which I understand. Their ministry getting established, which I understand. Money breakthroughs, relationship favor, those are all important. And they're all part of God's plan. But nothing is more important to, from the Lord's point of view in my life than I would stand before Him and I'll say, Mike, I have one main question first. Of all the areas of your life, did you bring them completely under my leadership, all the areas. Were you, I don't mean were you perfectly mature, but were you reaching with a focused tenacity to bring every area, your thoughts, your words, your money, all your struggles, were you reaching actively to love me in this way? And whether I attained to the breakthrough in every area is not the issue. The issue was I consciously seeking to do that as my main goal in life. Because that's why the Lord gives us extended years as a believer. It's not first to make impact. He can make a whole lot of impact through somebody else in one day and touch a whole nation if he wants. He does it. He wants to make impact through us. He really does. It's very important to him. But the first reason he extends your days is to give you an opportunity to give him that testimony that you contended in your life for every area to be in the pursuit of obedience. Not even the full breakthrough, but the pursuit of obedience. The active pursuit in every area of your life. And you're going to see in a few moments, this was not a small thing to Paul. Paul repeated this concept so many times, over and over. I mean, I don't know what subjects he said more often than this. I mean, surely there's probably a few. And yet you almost never hear this concept referenced in the body of Christ. And more trouble, well, that's troubling. How often do you spend time in a day, in a week, in a month, thinking on how to bring those final areas into the pursuit of obedience? And maybe some of you think, I don't even think that much about it. And that's what I mean. The most important subject is when me and the Lord meet eye to eye one day, that's the first question he's going to ask me. Did you seek? Did you endeavor? Did you contend? Did you reach in your spirit towards me to obey me, to love me in these, all these areas of your life? Not did you fully get the breakthrough, but did you make it the priority of your heart, the focus of your life to go after them? And I want to be able to say by the grace of God, yes. Now, I want to break through in all those areas, but I want to say I was contending to obey in all of them. And if that is the answer I give by the grace of God, then I will receive what Paul called the prize. 
And the prize is the Lord's testimony that you did it. And the prize is the ability to offer that response to the Lord. And, of course, there's many implications in terms of eternal rewards and many other things. But that's not even my point right now. It's the, but it's, the, it's to identify in your mind that is the primary reason you have extended days after you're born again. The main reason you are alive on the earth is to decide if you want to be in the family of God. And then once you decide to be in the family, to decide if you want to... The quality of love you want to offer to Jesus on that last day. That's your next decision. The quality of love that it is you want to offer. And the Lord says, I'll give you lots of opportunities. And I'll even give many of you extended years. But I want you to do this. I want you to offer me love in every area of your life through obedience. Paragraph A. We can only love Jesus on Jesus' terms. And there's a lot going on in the body of Christ and a lot of humanistic language in the culture of the church today. A lot of humanism in the, in the church culture. But I just want to be clear about this. We can only love Jesus on Jesus' terms. Love as being rooted of obedience, in the spirit of obedience. And what I mean... Love being in the pursuit of it, and it's better to say in the, the pursuit of affection-based obedience. It's obedience, I want to obey you because I love you. That is how Jesus defined love. That we would pursue obedience with affection, affection-based obedience in every area of our life. John 14. He says this so many times, and the reason this weighs my heart down as a shepherd he says it so many times, and then Paul the Apostle makes this point so many times, but you rarely hear it, hardly a whisper of it, a little here, a little there, and the body of Christ is going 100 miles an hour. So I'm going to just give you some of the verses. We know the verses. They're not new, but they need to be emphasized, not just in the pulpit. They need to be emphasized in what we're contending for in our private life. Most people, the thing they pray about Money problems, relationship problems, health problems, those are important. And Lord, please give me a breakthrough in my ministry. And the Lord's saying, those are good, but what about the breakthrough in your heart that I am most concerned about that is most defines who we are together? Oh, yeah, 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 I need that breakthrough. Oh, I do, I do. But Lord, please give me the money. Please give me the healing. Give me the new relationship or the breakthrough relationship and please give me some anointing on my ministry, please. And the Lord says, what about you having the anointing to give your heart fully to me before you meet me face to face one day? Because that will be your gift of love you give me on that day. Oh, I do love you. I do love you. But I need some more money. I need a bigger ministry. I need to be treated better. And the Lord says, oh, how I wish... The offering that you would give me on the day we meet was your first concern. Because the offering that we give him when we present our life is the offering of our love. That is the first concern in his relationship with us. And that was the first concern in Paul's heart in his ministry. I mean, he really appreciated his apostolic ministry. He took it very seriously. But he was after a prize, a very specific prize in an individual way. And that was to offer himself to the Lord, to give an offering of love. I don't mean a one time like the final year he really got committed. He wanted to offer decades of pursuing affectionate obedience to the Lord. He wanted to offer to Jesus, here's decades. I sought to love you on your terms. Here is my offering of love. And of course, then the Lord would answer it in a way that would just completely melt Paul. And then the Lord would give him eternal rewards that would... The eternal rewards are very important, but the eternal re rewards, the part that excites me most about them, they are expressions of Jesus' love for us. When he gives you garments in the age to come, those garments are really awesome, but the garments are declarations of how you felt about him and how he felt about you during your love on the earth, your life on the earth, the way that, that you loved him. And what I mean, I'll say that more clearly, you're, the garments, we'll all have different garments in the age to come. We'll all have different uh, degrees of glory. And they will be based on the way we gave our love to him. And those rewards are really his feeling about the way we loved him. I mean, he loves us no matter what. But he goes, I just want you to know 